what is relative targets or what are relative targets? I never quite know how to how to call it. Is it is it is it singular? Is it singular or plural relative targets? As an approach, it's one, right? So what is relative targets? First of all, it's a social technology that needs to be explained. I think a hospital is a social technology. A meeting, a school, Dem democracy is a social technology, um, and, and government in general. Uh, organizations are social technologies. So we are surrounded by social technologies in our social lives as people. Social technologies are not technologies like my watch or my phone or a pen or stuff that is physical. Social technologies obviously defy the physical. Uh, and they are not made of software in principle. They are social stuff that's a lot. Again, a meeting is already a social technology, an organization, a company. So relative targets is a social technology that wants to make performance systems or if you like performance management better. Yeah, It's a way of doing performance management and performance systems uh, in organizations of all kinds. Okay, so it's a social technology. That's the first thing I should say. The second thing, Relative targets is open source. So anybody can use it. Yes. Uh, you can use it if you like. Um, you can sell it if you like. This is very important. I learned this from a peer, from a colleague, Daniel Mezik from the United States. Uh, five years or so ago, uh, Sirka and I learned about the importance of making stuff available open source so that anybody can use it. Um, open source in this case means it's not free like in free beer, but free like in free speech. Yes, anybody can use it. But for example, I can I can offer a poster like this. This is a relative targets concept overview poster. I can sell this stuff for nine euros. You could also produce a poster or a book or a software around relative targets, offer that and sell it uh, in open source under this license that we chose and that you can look up. Uh, it's not it's not a crime to sell stuff, to make to create a business around relative targets. Um, but you cannot kind of forbid pe other people to use it and to make use of it or even to commercialize relative targets. So relative targets can be commercialized by anyone at any time, given that you um, adhere to the open source license, which I will show to you in a moment. All right. So, okay, relative targets is an open source social technology. It's, to give you a little bit of context, it, to us, it's the third approach in a series of three. It's like um, the third sibling of, of a little family or so, or the third child in a family. Um, the first approach that we developed that is part of this work the system uh, family is called open space beta that was published in 2018 uh, a couple of days ago we celebrated the fifth anniversary of open space beta then came cell structure design four years ago in 2019 and the last of these siblings of the work the system approaches up to now at least is relative targets and this approach was published in 2021 all right i'm the single the sole author but I will soon tell you a little bit about where this comes from and why, in a way, I invented it, but did not invent it. All right. So this is part of a system of systems approaches, uh, part of a family of social technologies of which open space beta, cell structure design, and relative targets are all part. Yeah. Now, relative targets is about performance systems it covers all aspects of performance systems and i believe it's the only approach that entails every aspect of performance systems usually when you look at performance systems approaches they only talk about measures or only talk about uh, targets or only talk about incentives and pay uh, relative targets as you will see covers all of this and for good reason we think but i will get into you into that in just a few minutes all right, I should maybe show you what uh, relative targets is about. I will share my my screen for that. If you type in relativetargets.com or go to this page, red42.com relative targets directly, you can see that there is a little bit of information. I will scroll down here. There's an explanation what it does. Here's a nice quote. And then, oh, there's the open source license. 
this I'm showing you this because it's all part of you know explaining how this works. This is the open source li license. It explains that you can use um, related targets freely. There's a concept overview, and here's the open source license, which tells you, okay, if you uh, if you want to make use of relative targets, you could do so. You only have to credit the original author. Point one second, provide the specified link to the source material, which is this page, and license your derivative creations to others under the identical terms, which means you can produce great stuff around relative targets, even improve it, uh, add features, but you have to keep these features, these increments, these inventions open source under the same license. Otherwise, you would break the open source license, and I would get personally get after you, you know, on a white horse and hunt you down. Something like that. Yes. So the idea of open source is free sharing. Uh, anybody can you any organization can do um, relative targets. Anybody can create a consulting business around relative targets, and so on and so forth. You just have to credit the original source, um, refer to the original link of this page here, red uh, red forty two dot com relative targets, and uh, keep the thing open source. Yes. Here's a concept overview, just to give you a brief overlook. What it is, what, what are the pieces or the parts of open, this open source social technology? Maybe you have heard that open source is very common in when using um, in, in software development. Uh, stuff like Linux is open source. Um, so many softwares now are open source and can be used and improved upon by anyone. Uh, but how to do this with the same with uh, social technology. The answer, I think, in making social technologies open source lies in defining principles or sets of principles to, let's say, define the code or the DNA of the approach of the social technology. And this is what has been done here. You can see here in the concept overview um, that, uh, in a way, relative targets consists of five, uh, four big blocks. Um, two sets of principles on the left and two visualizations or levels of relative targets at the right, you know, on the right side. So there is first of all these 10 principles of relative targets, so a set of principles, unbreakable, not like a menu, but they all apply to relative targets. If you cut out just one, the thing kind of loses its coherence. So the idea is that you, in order to get to relative targets, you must apply all these principles, but there is another set of principles, those of the beta curves. All right, I will not go into details where this comes from, but in a, I will mention that in a moment, the beta codex is another open source social technology that anybody can use or uh, make use of. The idea here is to codify this approach into a relatively small set of principles, 21, 22 principles, as you can see here, to make that understandable, to make it clear and understandable. Let's take the first one here, the first principle above, measure actual performance at the organizational level and the team level only, instead of setting fixed targets for individuals, departments, products, layers, silos. So each of these principles tries to be as specific as possible. Um, and lots of vocabulary is used here that is specific to performance systems um, these principles should allow you to understand how this is different from management by objectives or okrs or other fads and um, uh, uh, approaches and tools again relative targets is not a tool it's it's really a philosophy of running performance systems and here the first principles already hints at the the, the right side here um, the first principle says if you look at it in the second line, instead of setting fixed targets for individuals, departments, products, their silos, but what relative targets is, is that you use targets on the organizational level, that's the top here, and at the team level only. So this is why on the right side, in this conceptual overview, you see at the top, relative targets function at the organizational level, and at the bottom, they function at the team or cell level. What does it mean? I'm not trying to teach you this. I'm just trying to give you the information you can make of it, whatever you want. But what does this mean specifically? It means that in relative targets, in relative targets, we do not believe that individual performance exists. This is a tough thing to understand and wrap your head around. But it's one of the crucial 
things to understand relative targets. In relative targets, a company or organization of any kind does not believe that individual performance exists. Relative targets means you have to adhere to the logic that in an organization, performance or value creation or outcomes or results arise in the space between people who contribute to the value creation, to the results. All right. So that is why in relative targets, there are no individual targets, no individual performance measures, no individual incentives ever. Yeah. And this is kind of one of the, it's, it's one of the unique features of relative targets. Yeah. So in relative targets, we say no individual targets necessary. It's even abominable and against human nature and organizational nature and the nature of organizational physics to have individual targets. So we should have measures and targets only at the organizational level and secondly, at the team level. That's why you see here several happy or unhappy faces make a team or a cell. That's where we can measure performance. And we can measure it at the organizational level as a whole, like the sphere of the speech that you see here. That's it. All right. So this is one of the foundations of targets. Individual performance does not exist. Any questions at this point? Comments? Ryan, maybe you can be my sidekick in this event if you like. Oh, I'm happy to. I, I think it, the the idea of targets versus goals. I think that's that's one thing that's a that's a conceptual barrier that we hear about goals, we hear objectives in those things, understanding the distinction between what is a goal and what is a target, I think is yes. important. Yes. As a German, I never quite get my head around that distinction. By, by the way, it's a, it's an important, interesting topic to discuss. Is there a distinction? What is the distinction? And do, do we all understand the same? But certainly what, what relative targets suggest is to, to let go of fixed targets, right? That's why we call them relative targets. Fixed targets are certainly an ab abomination and uh, in why, by the way, this should be at least briefly mentioned, why are fixed targets not a good idea? Because there is complexity in the world. That is why planning doesn't really work so well. That is why fixing targets in advance uh, for the future is not a good idea. So these, these are essential insights that are behind relative targets. Yeah. And also the idea, of course, that you shall never incentivize people to reach a certain target. Otherwise, they will do everything to make the target and eventually break the company. Yeah. Another comment, Ryan, that you want to make? We recently discussed this in our beta codex live format, right? Want to add something else? Uh, no, I, I think the the idea of target shooting for targets being a <laughs> be, being a unfortunately violent kind of. Uh, concept but yeah. um no i i think the idea of what are we talking about what are people incentivized to do and what is the theory behind incentivization yes and we're, we're talking about individual and intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic or forward posed targets you know so imposed you, in the principles can you find that just to check up what Ryan just said, it needs to be found in those principles somewhere, right? It's actually in the, in the principles at the top and in the principles of the beta product at the bottom. What the, do the principles at the top say about incentives? Ah, here, here there's something. Principle number 10, relative fair base salaries plus profit sharing instead of minimized salaries plus, plus bonuses. So relative targets tells you, you shall not have incentives or bonuses. By the way, this is here. In, in which principle is that here? Number seven. Conditional income, that's what we call it in the beta codex. Participation is important, but not incentives. Yes. So relative targets, it's quite crisp, really, about all these concepts that we might talk about forever. We will not do this in this session. But yeah, Brian, you want to add something? Oh, I, I did just uh, number six, very explicitly, relative targets, not top-down prescription. That we're not saying that I, I'm in the top of a hierarchy. I'm saying you must do this, you shall do this, and this is what the target is. So go forth and do it. Ah, hit as this opposed below. to yeah. da, 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 da. where is it? Number six. Relative targets, not top-down prescription. That's where you find it again. Yes, exactly. The idea is not to drive performance, as the Americans love to call it. Not to drive performance, but to create conditions so that actual high performance can emerge in the system without command and control, right? Very essential. Of course, we don't want to preach this to you. We just want to explain the, the roots, the background, the religion, the philosophy behind it. Yes. The theory. Right. Yes, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, Niels, I have a question. Yes. 
and sorry, I switched back and forth between my mobile device and I had a few scheduling issues, but I'm fully here now. Um, question about that last thing, top down and targets. Yes. Uh, you know, as a company as a whole, if that's the biggest social group, um, you have to have a goal or a target for the company that ideally uh, others identify with in pieces of their contribution, right? So I know that's not, um, you know, it's not top down necessarily, but on the other hand, it is uh, because uh, the purpose of the company is a goal for the company as a whole. And then your participation is in pieces of that. H how do you describe that in how the targets actually of groups relate? Yes, um, that's an excellent question, of course. Um, not so difficult to answer, really, um, because um, this relationship between different layers of the company it's, or an organization is described right here, right on the right top side. I'll try to zoom in. Because here you can see it a little bit, what, what's called the sphere of activity here, the, 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 the skin of the peach, this, the, the boundary of the organization, we call it that, the sphere of activity. And the conditions under which an organization exists are given by the owners yes, in a company that's shareholders, for example, owners of the company. Um, and here you see it quite well, I hope that Okay, there's this boundary, the sphere of activity, and you shall, you should usually, <laughs> not usually, you always will in some way or another way measure the performance of the whole of a company, of an organization, right? That's obvious. Um, now, every cell in this network that you can see here in the image should contribute to the whole or will contribute to the whole, of, um, especially the cells in the periphery that, that will you know, for, for profit organization will generate some margin or profit contribution. So the whole performance of the individual cells, which you can see here, three of them you can see here at the bottom, that will make up the whole. You know, so in a way, relative targets doesn't has, has have this breakdown logic that you see in pyramid um, org charts usually, that you break down performance and roll out and break down all the time. Um, here, the idea is if all the cells of the periphery perform well, the whole will perform well. One of the major biggest use cases of relative targets is Handelsbanken. They have run this for 52 years this year, and uh, they are kind of the co-creators of, of relative targets. And of course, if the bank as a whole country performs well, they know that their cells perform well compared to the external market as well. They cannot compare individual branches that make up the bank to external branches of other banks, you know, the branches of other banks or units of other banks, but they can compare their branches internally and compare the whole to competitors. That's the logic of relative targets. So would you say that on a, in this picture here, a relative target at the organizational level could be <clears throat> that the organization decides to gain a certain market share 20% of a certain market. Yeah, market share is not such a good target, really. And uh, this is probably in the concept overview somewhere as well. Now I have to look it up. Where Where is that written that market share is not a good target? I'm not sure if it's written here. But I will give you I will give you the explanation anyway why it's why market share is not a very good target. Here's the thing. Any measure that relates to size is not so good. I will give you an example. Handelsbanken is not the world's biggest bank, but it's so arguably the world's best or Europe's best bank. That means that it will grow, but grow is not the superior target. It's a result of success. This is very uh, Toyota, very Handelsbanken, very, very WL Gore, very simple, by the way. These organizations that use relative targets, they usually abandon the idea of size, maximizing size and maximizing value, uh, um, market share. And they turn- uh, Well, profit I don't know that- and Yeah, I don't know that market- Yeah, I don't know that market share is necessarily directly related to size. Oh, it is. Think about it. Well, it depends on what market share you define and what markets you go after, right? 
you could you could regardless you what could, you, you you compare yourself with it is about size market share is about size in the market yeah here here's here uh, this is a riddle we cannot i cannot I, I, this is not a workshop i'm not supposed to teach you anything okay oh okay okay but okay. just just think about it for a moment toyota always aspired to be best quality and best cost which combined is best value yeah the idea is if you have that and hannes Banker has the same uh, you might call it strategy if you have best quality and best cost then nobody will ever be able to beat you and you will uh you will grow growth is a problem not an objective it's very tricky this philosophy of relative targets is it's quite mind it's mind fuck. tom you want to add something yeah niels um I'm completely on board with the philosophy. I understand it. Um, I'm curious about examples. So actual to actual comparisons. Yes. Could you go through a couple of those just so I get a sense of what that means practically? Yes. By the way, th this is so great. Let me let me first share a little a little story. Two or three years ago uh, in Croatia, I witnessed the keynote by Joste Block, founder and CEO of uh, Brotsok, the Dutch health care organization they do much more by now but they i think they now have around ten thousand people or so the organization is only 10 or 12 years old but massive organization very well known through frederick lalu's book reinventing organizations do you know it tom yeah so this guy just a block very nice dutch guy um he said the following when they founded Brotsar, which was just a little over a decade or so ago he said they started with developing their software application, how to run the organization, something Manfred will feel very, uh, very comfortable with the thought. So they founded this healthcare organization with the idea that they had to have a good software to run it eff efficiently and effectively. And then Joste Block mentioned when they wanted to figure out a way of measuring and managing performance, they looked at other companies, what was there, and they copied the model Handelsbank which is very interesting. As a healthcare company, home healthcare, you copy the performance system of a Swedish bank. It's not very intuitive, right? You wouldn't usually think of that bridge. And here's this thing. Handelsbanken is totally relative targets. Bullsock is totally relative targets. There are other great companies. In Germany, we have DM Drogeriemark. Tom, you might be acquainted with that. Mm -hmm. A large company, 60, 70,000 people or so, they have run relative targets for 30 years, since 1991, I think. Aldi, WL Gore, Toyota, other cases, Southwest Airlines, and so on, Guardian Industries, and so on, Alcel, a retail company in Sweden as well. So those are cases. Yes. Um, as always, in, 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 or as so often in science, how many cases do you need to prove that this is a good, um, that this is better than other approaches to performance? Um, you cannot really prove it. You can only compare it, I think. Uh, relative targets is what you get to if you start believing that you shall not plan. Organizational planning is bollocks. You shall not fix targets. You shall not incentivize people. Individual performance in an organization doesn't exist. Once you start believing in those things, then the solutions become obvious and very restricted. So how does Handelsbanken solve this? Comparisons between branches, they have league tables or rankings between the teams. They perform themselves, they benchmark themselves against other banks. They comp com compare regions to regions. They compare the branches to branches. And of course, every unit of the organization for the whole and the branches and the regions, they, com they monitor performance over time. This is not shown in the concept overview, but... Um, it's written there, and I will show you. So just so that you understand that the answer to Tom's question is in the concept of it. it's here. For example, at team level, what you could use are these five types of relative teams targets. Do you see it at the left? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and on the organizational level, this what is what we identified. We might figure out more, but basically there are four types of relative organizational targets. Yes, external rankings, period to period comparisons, multi-period trends against benchmarks and snapshot comparisons these are of course denominations that we chose you might choose choose others but these are things that we found that we know of reporting stuff that of course you can make this work with sap or any conventional erp system or transaction system as well 
Not sure if this is an answer to you, Tom. You might follow up on that. Um, Ryan, do you want to say something first? I think I think you, you went to the concept right there. It's it's about this idea of competition, this sportsmanlike. I yes. think you mentioned the sportsmanlike competition, the, the league tables. Yes. And I think you say that externally, the competition is not for an a percentage of some mythical absolute market share. We don't we don't know that how far do we need to grow. But yes. this is who who are who are our competitors? Are we doing better or worse than them? Why is that? Maybe that that's that's the sense of I would I think you did say this in some of your materials, this sportsmanlike competition, this yes. healthy competition, not this ruthless competition at all costs. Yes. Kind of By the way, in the relative targets you have to create uh, you have to create a relative target system in a way that people that teams will not start to compete around clients or price or nonsensical stuff like that, right? To that's why, for example, incentives are always a better idea and they cannot be combined with relative targets. One shall not incentivize teams to improve their performance or to gain market share or to grow. Growth is the death of any relative target system for obvious reasons. If you think it through, um, if you once you press an, uh, an organization to grow, you will, can I use vulgar language for a moment? You will fuck up everything, right? You will force people to make the business happen to corrupt clients, to corrupt distribution channels, to corrupt people, or, or people will make their their uh, incentives. There are a thousand reasons why incentives will not work, of course, and why they kill intrinsic motivation. But the, these any incentive or any pushing for growth or size would um, create an incentive, of course, to malevolent competition, and that is not in the interest of decentralized, self-organized, democratic organizations. Yeah? Does this make sense, Tom, by the way? We don't have to agree, yeah, by I, the way. I'm absolutely. Just I'm just summarizing in my own head. I think the, 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 notion, the notion of healthy competition among teams is, is one kind of uh, overriding category. The other I would call uh, continuous improvement. So very much like Toyota. Yes. So yes. you are improving relative to your own past performance. Yes. You're getting better. Yeah. Yes. And what, the, what what you want is fuzzy logic in the link of that to market share or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Relative targets do not want to answer what's good or bad. They want mm -hmm. relative targets as a system of performance uh, measurement uh, wants to make all teams and the whole organization, every everyone in an organization, aware that we shall think about how our performance relates internally, externally to others. Uh, are we really improving just because the numbers go up or is this just an incident and all that kind of stuff? It wants to raise questions. Indicator, indicator means um, to indicate, to hint at something, not to answer something. Yeah, relative targets doesn't want to give answers. The answers shall be given by teams that then act upon their numbers, be them being good or bad. Yeah, it's 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 really a philosophy. All this performance assistance thing is a philosophy, and that's why we created principles and and this whole concept around it. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. I, I did put a put one of your essays in the in the chat and the uh, the MBOs versus relative targets. And there's some really good graphics there that kind of lay out. Uh, what you're talking about in terms of league performance. Yes, that's on LinkedIn, right? Yes, it thanks is. for having me. Yeah. Um, okay, we already traced a little, uh, it traced relative targets a little bit back in history, but just to just to make sure that we mentioned some of the roots, actually we traced back relative targets to the work of Mary Parker Follett as something of a contributor uh, idealization. Let's say we can, we can trace it back 100 years to Mary Parker Follett's work. But a very clear manifestation of relative targets, you can find it in the work of W. Edwards Deming, who I recently published a book about as well, if you accompany what I'm doing. And uh, Edwards Deming, W. Edwards Deming clearly advocated relative targets, not fixing targets, not incentivizing, not creating individual incentives and key measures. Uh, he argued ferociously against performance appraisal or ranking people or forcing or bribing them with incentives and bonuses. W. Edward Stemming argued against all of that. So he's clearly, and of course he argued pro statistical measurement of actual performance and that kind of stuff and how to act upon it, not through hierarchy, but in self-organized teams. So Edward Stemming is clearly a pioneer of relative targets. 
And then we have the whole beyond budgeting movement where this wording came up for the first time, I think. Yeah, relative targets as opposed to fixed targets. I was a part of the beyond budgeting roundtable for five years up to 2007. And in this community, the Beyond Budgeting Roundtable, we already had this uh, vocabulary developed of relative targets and, <clears throat> of course, the idea that that was contrasted, should be contrasted with fixed targets, incentives, and so on. Um, so the Beyond Budgeting, the work of the Beyond Budgeting community is a root, then we developed this further in the Beta Codex Network, the community that I founded in 2008. All these Company cases went into it, Handelsbank and Toyota, Artsell, Guardian Industries, uh, WL Gore, a little bit of Google, by the way, um, but not the stupid OKR stuff. Um, I will not talk about this in this session, but um, that's the evil side uh, at Google of performance systems. Then DM Drogeriemarkt, big case from Germany, Morningstar and others. They can be called the pioneers of relative targets, including um, Birdsoft, of course. And uh, yes, just to give you give you the background, but then in 2021, I decided to turn this into an open source social technology so, so that, um, let's say, there could be more diffusion of the com concept in the market. So once we had this idea, it took us, or took me five months or so to publish it in 2021. So that's where it comes from. That's a little bit of the history, of course, not a complete history of relative targets, but just to give you a little bit uh, to think about, to reflect upon. Yeah? So relative targets, in a way it's old because it has, has its root in the history of companies like Handelsbank and Toyota. So it's, you, you might easily argue that relative targets has existed forever in certain organizations, uh, certainly more than 50 years at companies like Toyota and Handelsbanken. It is new in a way that it only became a social open source social technology in 2021, so um, two years ago. Or so yeah, so it's new and old all at the same time. But what I sh I would like to remind you is, relative targets is indivisible in the sense of you cannot um, split it up into parts, right? The idea of relative targets is you must adhere, you shall adhere to all these principles. They are coherent. They add, they, mm, they form a logic among each other, among themselves. So take out one of the principles. Uh, it will all kind of not make sense. It, you know, there is also all these principles. If you look at them, they have this logic of do this, not that, right? Do this, the first part of the sentence, instead of the other part of the sentence. Ignore the instead of part of one of these principles, and it will all start to stop to make make much sense. Any questions, comments from your side? Oh, there's a quote from W. Edward Stemming. You want to read it out, um, Ryan? Yes, management by numerical goal is an attempt to manage without knowledge of what we do, and in fact, it's usually management by fear. Yes. In a way, that's that's a very Southwest Alliance uh, way to say, right? Relative targets is management by love, whereas fixed targets, planning, incentives, OKRs, management by objectives, all that shit is management by fear. Lovely yeah. yeah, quote. This is so beautiful. Yes? Yeah. Of course, we don't have to agree. It's, I just want to invite you to make up your mind. Tom, anything to yeah, add? Uh, wonderful. We're right yeah. on track. Yeah. Um, now, where do we stand with relative targets? I want to give you a little bit of, uh, of the context of where do we stand. I just mentioned that this was invented and not invented, figured out as a social technology only in 2021. Back in 2021, I already wanted to publish a book about this. It did not happen yet. Uh, I'm still writing the book. I hope it will come out in German this year. So there's a relative targets book in the works. You can pre-order it. But I will only publish it in later this year, uh, in autumn of this year. So there's a book coming. Of course, that book will be translated into English. But for now, you can read the articles. Um, Ryan shared this article on LinkedIn here. Uh, you can look that up in my book, Essays on Beta Volume 1. There are several articles about relative targets. There are videos. There is this web page that I showed you under relativetargets.com. You can get the poster anytime. 
the whole thing is active. Yeah, You can, of course, research the cases, make up your mind, write your own articles or books. You are free to do all of that. You can make up your own research, embed relative targets in your systems. That's what um, Manfred uh, might be doing. Hopefully it does has already done or is doing or shall do, should do, right? So all of that is possible and logical and inevitable and you are invited to make use of relative targets even in your consulting practice as a software developer. Yeah, all of that is fine and well, yes? And of course, if you do want to have an additional deep dive into learning, there are two options coming up yes. in the next several months, right? Yes, this I should mention, right? Just to share the image here with you again from my browser. This is the, um, um, the overview of Red42 events. What we will do offering now, what we are offering now as Red42 is this kind of um, short workshop. Red, we call it Relative Targets Quick Start, a two hour high impact course, as we call it. The, fir the first of these will happen on 29 August. Anybody can participate. There are tickets available already on Eventbrite. Yeah, so this is a good learning opportunity for now. We will do more intense qualifications, longer, more rounded qualifications. Ryan and I will do that. And we will start that together in 2024 for relative targets. Yeah. So we are a little bit slow at offering and all, but uh, it's, it's coming, yes? This is quick start format is the first kind of learning workshop learning format we are offering. Uh, but again, this is open source. You can also offer learning formats around relative targets. Nobody will hinder you at doing so. All right. Is that what I should say about this? Uh, did I forget something, Ryan? Yeah. That's where we stand, right? That's where we're standing. And uh, Ryan, you work together with Niels, obviously. Yes, uh, we, ha we have a burgeoning new partnership. Yes, we are starting ah. to doing these course co courses and certifications together. Yes. 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 And mm -hmm. we are only getting into that. We're starting with open space beta in September and self structure design qualification in September and another called time box change. We will start that in September. And relative targets, we will start that in at some point next year, maybe the beginning of next year, I'm not sure, yeah. Right? Indeed. What else, what's missing? So a lot of things are available already, um, to make up your mind and learn about it. Um, but again, you can also already start producing content around this, producing content, products or features around this. You're invited to um, make relative targets your own, so to speak. Uh, Niels, what, yes. one, one more question from my side. Yes, please. Uh, so you, you spoke about uh, friendly competition like sports. Yes. Um, I assume for the overall performance of an organization, multiple teams, the whole company, um, establishing or learning from best practices, meaning why is one team better than the other in certain ways, right, uh, would be important. So how do companies... Uh, facilitate such learning in a, let's say, global complex organization where you could have hundreds, thousands of these teams. How do you exchange the information needed at the speed, at the pace that uh, mm -hmm. business today takes? Yeah, and why, why are you asking the question? Do you want to? Say uh, asking the question, what's your doubt? I, there's no, no, there's no doubt. Uh, I'm just wondering, um, you know, in the end, a lot of this comes down to information. Yes. Right. Yes. People, people, and information, and and exchanging information, right? Yes. And this uh, is about exchanging performance information, right? Which is all well, yeah. Yeah, you know, performance information or even you know uh, content, um, but let's let's say with performance. Let's say with uh, since we're talking about relative targets. Let's, yes. um, but at scale, you know, um, you and I have had that conversation before. Um, you probably know the reason I ask is that these models need technical support yes. to be able to exist, right? Yes, 
Um, technical support. I'm, I'm, I, if, if I can have technical support in, in what sense, Manfred? I want to make sure I understand. Um, information about each other, for example, what's going on left and right, and you're doing this. So, so uh, our customers work on same things around the globe simultaneously, not even knowing of that, right? So mm. uh, one team that could do something really well, uh, another team does the same thing, does it maybe not so well, but they don't even know about each other. So how, yeah. do, you, how do you make the benefit of this scale in a time when also um, what you call the value creation structure, that value creation structure is moving quicker and quicker and let's not forget AI is entering that discussion as well from a level of providing information and uh, performance improving input or destroying input, depending on how it's used. Yes, yes. Well, this is a multi-layer question actually, but it's, um, I think um, it might not be so tough to describe what it means for, for a specific organization. So here's the um, one of the things that we learned over time um, doing this together with companies. One of the things we learned is that any, even the most miserable accounting system or ERP system is, is technically capable to make this kind of stuff happen. Yes. Of course, you will, you may not have this. I, I would disagree with that, but that's a detail. <laughs> Yeah, why am I saying it? Why am I confident that it is so? Uh, because any accounting system or bookkeeping system knows the concept of different cost centers and different accounts. And with that, you can construct this. The reporting might not be elegant. It might not be beautiful. It might not be fast the way you would like it, but it's possible. For example, at Handelsbanken, I know for a fact that during decades, their comparisons between branches, they didn't look good. The system was looking very primitive, but still they have had it since 1971 in one way or another. Yeah? So, of course, a great IT system like yours, Manfred, it can you can you can make this uh, information accessible easier, faster, more elegantly, and so on. But in principle, any accounting system or ERP system would suffice to set up a relative target system. It so I, I, I would. I would disagree with that because mm -hmm. the current IT systems do not have the architecture that you have currently on your screen there because they are all the current IT systems, especially those that you mentioned, mm -hmm. come from the command and control functional structure yep. and they cannot adapt to dynamic value creation structures. No, so whatever can. you... What, they can. They can. Uh, I, I so I would disagree with that, but that may take us a little further uh, into some no, technical. We, discussion. Can, we cannot prove this yeah. to each other here. Um, I, I've done it with all kinds of companies, with all kinds of accounting systems, advising my clients how to do it, um, and so far I have not found any any system incapable. For example, um, Aldi. I know that they struggled to when they adopted SAP many years ago. They struggled to figure out how to make this happen, but it's really not that difficult. In the idea. And this, this is, I hope it's a response to um, your question, Manfred, as well. The idea, you see here cells in the periphery and cells in the center, right? These right. cells right. around here are periphery cells, and then there are center cells, in this case, five that are depicted here in the image. So here's the thing about relative targets. Relative targets essentially is about spheres in the periphery doing the business for external clients. So they, in a for-profit company, at least, they earn money. They make a a margin, a profit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all the cells in the periphery are something like business cells, business. You shall not call them this way, but they are like business units. Yes. So they, in a for-profit company, at least they make a profit. Now, what happens if the peri if you if you use this method uh, approach? It means that you turn the periphery cells into your business cells that own the money. They earn the money and own the money. So what does what does the center do? The center does not have money. It doesn't have income from cl external clients. The periphery serves external clients, gets an income from the invoices paid by the clients. That's the biggest applause that the market can give. You know, the client pays an invoice. 
Now, what does this center do? The center doesn't have resources. It can only sustain itself selling services to the periphery. So relative targets means that there is an internal market. And this, you will find this here in, on the left side in several principles as well. Let's zoom into it. Where is this, the internal market thing? Oh, here, number nine. Market like outside in resource coordination instead of planned allocations from the top. So in relative targets, you do not need to allocate, you don't need to, to budget. The system works through the periphery paying the center money to provide services that the periphery itself doesn't want to do. So the the I'm, I'm uh, you know we've how, had this how redundancy yeah. is driven out. That's the easy answer. Yeah. Um, so on that on those things were generally uh, been aligned for for a long time. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. A question to this picture: yes. uh, are, are you would you agree that those lines are information? And uh, no, no, here they are. Uh, who serves who? The lines in this uh, image above on the right here means who serves who and gets paid by whom back. Hmm. This is the outside in, inside out relation. Inside out, who serves whom? Outside in, who pays for what? So, so my question earlier would have been whether there are lines also between. So if it's that, then it's understandable why th there are no lines between the cells exactly. of the outer circle. Exactly. They can collaborate. They can talk. They can do things together. They can co yeah, collaborate, do projects together, and so on. But those in all those lines of communication are not here in the image. Yes, you're totally right. Great, excellent question. Yes. Yeah. Communication okay. is everywhere between those cells and individual the individuals in within the cells as well. Yeah. And that is not depicted here. That's not really part of relative targets. It's part of, of an organization, but not really part of this concept. Beautiful comment. Thank you. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, um, and this just from, from my experience and background in terms of enterprise resource planning systems, right? Mm -hmm. So so there's there's an idea that so this is this is this how the supply chain the flow is managed, right? So in my mind, I'm thinking that is very much a center function and a very large center function that has to put what what services are being provided from that ERP software development team that is not generating income for itself and yet needs to serve multiple cells in the periphery. So so that that's how how might we design um, or, or articulate and communicate to those folks in the software development domain who have spent years and years and years with SAP, um, what have you, and how how do we create performance systems that that serve the periphery in this decentralized model? So that that's that's a that's a use case I'm trying to 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 come at with myself is that applying relative targets to a large software organization in the shared services component of a corporate company. So big question maybe, but. Is that a question or is it an answer? What is it? Well, well, well I don't know. It's, it's, it's the large companies like this. Again, like Hansbank, like Jim for yeah. like all these companies. I would imagine that there are information systems within them that support the periphery. What are the kind of relative targets that that those elements of a corporate corporation would be managing, because since they don't have a PNL, yeah, in, in relative targets, every team has a PNL. That's a big difference between relative targets and conventional performance systems. Here, in this in this approach, every team, every cell, being it in the periphery or the center, will have a, a full profit and loss statement. Yes? Okay. Very important. It will have an income. The periphery gets paid by external clients. The center gets paid by, by the periphery. The periphery must earn a margin, profit, so to speak. So to speak. Yeah. The center can only break even, cannot make a profit. Yeah. Ah, okay. It only so the center only survives selling its services to the periphery and getting paid by the periphery, which is which is ultimately what drives out. Um, uh, waste. Yes. By the way, this is nice that you. I think we are both talking also about Scrum implicitly. Maybe uh, if you have Scrum teams in the center, uh, one thing that I I hate Scrum for is that in twenty years of existence or whatever, it has not evolved to contemplating financial the financial side of software development. Scrum is just about happy teams. 
doing shit, you know, from get, get shit done into the done column, you know, definition of done. That's what Scrum seems to be about. And, and, and a little bit of iterating. But in relative targets, a Scrum team shall own its own time, its own resources, yes? And of course, periphery cells making use of a Scrum team would have to pay for the, in the, in the simplest way, to pay for a Scrum team would be to pay for a sprint, to pay, pay for a week, a month of work, of the units of work, the units of mm -hmm. contribution or something like that. So it's very easy to combine the relative targets approach with, with Scrum, with Lean, with Agile as a, as, as a whole. Of course, these things fit together, right? Uh, relative targets is not anti-Agile, much the contrary, it completes Agile in a way. Let's, let me put it like where Scrum and Agile, the Agile Manifesto, have blind spots, relative targets and self structure design as well, the other sibling approach complement that. Yeah. So it's a beautiful addition to to the agile repertoire. Sadly, the agile community is not yet embracing it, maybe because you cannot sell SIM certifications around relative targets yet. Yes, but this is just my opinion. Martyrum. Yeah, beautiful questions, beautiful comments that you made. The idea of relative targets is to work with beta organization and decentralization, with agile, with lean. There are other great concepts like quick response manufacturing. It, Relative targets combines with all these things. Actually, I think there is no lean without relative targets. There is no agile without relative targets. These things, I believe, are all needed. Like democracy needs three different kinds of power that needs to be separated from each other. So in a way, self-organized agile work requires not just principles of the agile manifesto of software development, obviously, but also relative targets, also self-structure. We believe that these social technologies complement each other. They are not alien or enemies. Uh, they shall be combined. Yes. I would not combine scaling frameworks with relative targets, but that is for another session to discuss. Yeah. Ryan, comments? Well, I, I think I'm also kind of coming back to Manfred's question about information dissemination. I think this also is uh, the philosophically where we are with open space beta and the whole group process that is in very in time box change and whole group process to create common knowledge around what's happening in an organization. You know, you open space for the whole system, right? And, and you invite the whole system to participate. And again, now, now that has certain levels of complicatedness, of course, in coordinating those things, but how better to disseminate information across, you know, teams who have a connectedness to purpose then opening space for them to have that dialogue and in yes. the way they need to have it. And of course, relative targets implies to have financial tra transparency about the financial numbers. Mm. And that's very specifically generated through, not just through team PLs or sell PLs, profit and loss statements, but also through this idea of internal markets and the periphery pays the center for its services. Yeah. That drives up transparency, uh, enables you know more entrepreneurial thinking everywhere in an organization instead of allocations, budgets, plans, incentives driving the organization from the top down. Yeah. Good. I, I add, add one yeah. one thing uh, definitely. This I have to mention. Um, where's the applicability of re the relative targets approach? We believe that relative targets works for organizations of at least twenty five people or more. Yeah. If you have an organization with just 15 people, why would you need this concept? You probably do not fully need it, yes? Relative targets st starts to make sense once you have three, four, five, six cells, yes, with um, their own profit and loss uh, calculations and so on. And uh, the bigger, the better. You can, so uh, relative target scales naturally in that you can run it with 500 cells in the periphery or 1,000 or 10,000 cells in the periphery. It's no problem. You can even have 100,000 cells in the periphery if needed. Yes. Um, so it scales, but for very, very small organizations, relative targets as an approach probably doesn't make sense. The internal market approach wouldn't work well. You wouldn't have much comparison between the cells. So um, you, you really, it gets, starts getting useful when you have 25 people at least. Questions from you guys? Things you want to, would like to get answered? Tom, you're already happy. That's fantastic. I'm 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 happy so far. I have a, I have a philosophical question. Yes, why not? 
if you like. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm struck by this sense of paralysis in German society right now mm. um, of, our, of our blockages of ourselves with old ways of thinking. Now, I know you've been working in the education sector for a while. I've seen a few of your posts on this. Could you talk about the application of relative targets, perhaps to something like, like all German society? I mean, what are we facing here? How could this perhaps be a contribution to solving some of these problems? Yes, uh, that's too tough a question to answer, be answered fully, but let's take our schooling system in Germany as a, pro as a problem. We obviously have this schools that are in decay physically and also intellectually, we are not teaching. I'm not sure if you follow the figures around German education, uh, Tom, but recently there was a survey showing that 25% of school children do not know how to properly read at the age of whatever 10 i'm not sure about the age but well i, I mean it's, it's getting, getting even worse directly for my clients i mean the, my clients are now my customers are getting people coming from school and they say that the level of quality has so drastically dropped and here's uh, the thing and here's yeah. the thing that's that's the interesting exactly that's the observation so the mm -hmm. the the results have dropped now mm -hmm. i always like to say but the quality of the raw material kids has not mm -hmm. dropped. The quality of kids is still the same. Okay, mm -hmm. some of these kids might come from Ukraine and not speak German properly, or they might come from Syria as immigrants and not speak German properly, but that's still intelligent kids, right? That's like, not the issue. The yeah. Kids yeah. cannot be the fucking problem, period, right? Exactly. No. So what's the problem? It's in the system. No. The, the reflex, this is so interesting. Uh, Tom is seducing me to, to, to expand this. I hope you are still interested in this, but I will Absolutely. try to make this brief. Of course, yeah. one of the solutions could be money is, there's too little money, we need to pop more money. Or, uh, money is a, can help to solve the problem. But I think the main problem in this case, for example, is lack of decentralization. I, uh, a couple of years ago, I met the Hessen the, the minister of education from Hesse, the state of Hesse, guy from the conservative party, good mm -hmm. guy, a lawyer, he has no clue about decentralization. He's actually a great command and control guy. He loves to centralize and steer and they, they love to roll out programs. It takes forever until they roll out everything. And they have hundreds and hundreds of things. Everything is rolled out. That is the opposite of decentralization. Lots of centralized steering. That's going yeah. on the same, by the way, is going on in the United States. It kills... That's why we don't have investment in schools. We have the money available. We have the money available. So that's, that's the worst, but we do not spend it in the schools because in a yeah. way it's, it's all governed through centralized speaking. Too much control, too much budgeting, too much centralized decision-making. So we, if you take decision-making in education away, away from the schools, you get lack of action. The same thing, by the way, inspired Götz Werner of the GM Dorimak to decentralize 30 years ago, 1991, to decentralize decision making to the branches because one branch manager told him, but I put an, an order to fix this in our branch, this furniture office, uh, store furniture, and they didn't reply. And Götz Werner said, wait, the branch manager put an, placed an order, it wasn't done, so nobody doesn't any, do anything. Everybody waits. That's what happening. What's happening in state government or uh, governmental administration at all levels of society and companies and public administration, even education. So we are stifling action by centralization. This is a hard thing to understand. Money is not the problem. We have to decentralize. Decentralization is cheap. That's what the Handelsbank case teaches us. If you decentralize, you don't have you create less overhead, you empower people to act. You can still have a four-eyed principle. You can still have a PL, a profit and loss, total transparency of numbers. You can have all that, but you shall decentralize decision making. Mm -hmm. So I think we are stifling our society, government administration, and so on, and companies through centralization. To me, the whole solution is pretty much decentralization. Mm -hmm. And relative targets is one way to, to get to that without losing, losing control, without creating chaos. Relative yes. targets is the most disciplined way of running organizations or running administration. We shall have it. Abandon budgeting, abandon, plan, abandon planning, abandon centralized steering, decentralize, empower, measure performance, rank performance, all of those without incentives and so on. Does it make sense? 
yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board. Yeah. Could, Niels, could I include my opinion regarding of this course. topic? Of course. Complementary to your vision. So in my opinion, absolutely, the, the system is, is terrible in all areas. Uh, and happily, we are changing all, peu à peu. But uh, in my opinion, um, the focus is uh, wrong. So uh, the system, the school system had created these programs. They focus, focus on the program. They make the instructions to the teacher so that they apply the program independently of the children. Exactly. What is education is uh, that all what the children have inside of them, all the talents they bring to life with them, that uh, come to the surface, okay? So they need to be in focus of the system. The children, every child, child as unique uh, individual being yes. <laughs> needs uh, to be inspired and, and offered uh, the things, the topics that are interesting for him yes. and cultivate their strengths and not uh, put them down because their weaknesses Yes. and put the focus of the children in accomplish a uh, target that other people externally had set for them. So uh, following the people pleasing uh, idea. So in my opinion, it's all completely wrong. Yeah. So I agree we with you. We in... synthesize the didactics, the, the, the teaching content and the administration of a school as well. And we do this kind of thing, the same kind of thing in organizations, by the way. Today, you have sales managers who try to execute everything that's prescriptive and the programs and the details, you know, and you take away the decision making from them so they don't have power to decide upon when to have lunch with a client or when to give something away or when not to do that. They cannot make that decision. So it's, it's the same. It, this, the problem is parallel in public administration and in companies, organizations of all kinds. Of course, in hospitals, doctors do not have the liberty to do what they want either because they're incentives and controls. Uh, yeah, but one of, the, one of the main things is that relative targets is about, it's a, it's a way of decentralizing decision-making by empowering the periphery to be res responsible for results. Yeah. Teams empower teams in the periphery too, especially to generate results without stifling uh, creativity and the same thing is lacking lacking in education in Germany. By the way, the Finnish education system, if you know the there uh, in Germany, we have of course thick books about what is to be taught in which class or which grade of school to what kind of children. In Finland, apparently, they have one page per per semester or year. You know, so wow, less prescription, Great. better results. I mean, the results are everywhere statistically. Yeah. Of course, you have to drive down testing. Which is similar to incentives, you know. Uh, if you want to kill a school, if you want to kill pupils, uh, test them a lot, you know. If you want to make make uh, school children suffer, lots of tests is good. Lots of grading, grading every day, right? The same is r incentives in organizations. If you want to kill motivation, lots of incentives. Push, carrot and stick. Lots of carrots, lots of sticks. Mm -hmm. uh, so the perils are there. It's not the same. Of course, public administration and school, running a school and relative targets it doesn't cover it all, but it certainly means to this end of decentralizing decision making to people close to the value creation. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. If you any any last question or so that you want to throw at me, uh, I would like to then wrap it up. Oh, everything okay? All so yes. All good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Please um, spread the word about relative targets. Talk about it. Make it your, your own. Do it. Sell it to clients. Produce products. Collaborate with others like Ryan and myself in doing it with companies, if you like. Uh, what else? If you want to get qualified a little bit, try the relative targets quick start course coming up at the end of August for the first time. Or show up at our certification course next year if you like you don't have to get qualified with us um, because this is open source anybody can use it at any time without getting qualified by us yes so yeah or you can and, wait for the book no don't wait for the book i'm not sure don't wait for the book right so miriam wants to write her own book you know agile scrum yeah you write your own book right? let's publish about it let's talk about it all of this is possible we can collaborate or not collaborate all this is possible yeah, and, and I, I was going to say that that the qualifications, while it's not about 
achieving some kind of title or piece of paper for yourself. I And for me, and again, the philosophy I would take into it is being with people who care about this material and who want to bring it forward and want to go deeper and know more about it and be able to articulate it to people with authority and power to make this thing happen. Yes. So mm -hmm. I think that is that is a, a joyful experience that I had certainly in the master class, and I and I would hope that we would foster in uh, further qualification courses. For everyone here in this session, let's stay in touch. Yes, if you want to discuss further, I will be delighted to see you again or hear from you again. Uh, thanks for showing up, Miriam, um, Manfred, Tom, and of course Ryan. Thank you very much. This Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.